Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, Snowing Down Like Mad, but today we are back at the auction house and I am going to be going through that with you, but we're going to go in straight away because it's hammering it down, okay? and welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. It is snowing so heavily outside that I'm gonna have to be quite quick. Oh my God, I've changed my mind about everything. I've gotta go right now. I've gotta go right now. Ladies, I've got Mercedes, it's rear wheel drive. There's no way I'm gonna get down that hill. So that was about the most dramatic intro I've ever filmed. It was snowing so heavily. I slid down the hill. I just about managed to make the turn. It was dangerous, but I managed to get out. Um, and then I returned. I mean, the snow, the snow stopped, it stopped snowing. I went to Morrison's, I waited out for about an hour, and then I thought I'd come back and finish off the tour. So look, we're back at the auction house. It's not quite finished. There's no furniture in. The snagging list hasn't been done. I can see a few things that still need to be finished off. But I thought it was a good idea to give you a tour and show you where we're at with this house. So let's go through here. This is going to be a four bedroom mini HMO. So this is obviously the first bedroom, as you can see. And it's a good size room. It's a good size room. It's about 110 square foot. So well over the minimum size. It's a good double. And that will rent out for about £425 a month. This is a shared space here. And this is really, really good space. There's gonna be, obviously, a dining table, chairs, and then over there, there'll be a sofa, Netflix on the TV. We do Netflix subscriptions with all of our TV properties. And the reason is that you don't need to put a TV license if you're only streaming. Whereas if you start putting a um, terrestrial TV on, you have to do an individual TV license for each room, and that could get expensive. So it's through to the kitchen. The kitchen is dusty and a bit messy, but it is getting there. And as you can see, it's really starting to come along. Um, and the bathroom as well. I mean, this is where, I don't know if you remember, we had sewage seeping up through the floor. Um, as I said, this house was bought at auction and the big problem with this property was that, was that kitchen area and the drainage. So if we come round here, um, now the snow's melted, it's, it's quite simple. The, the drainage down there, it all had to be dug up. Drains had to be, they'd all collapsed underneath. So they had to be redone and then put back, it, put back in place. And it wasn't actually such an expensive issue. That was about 1,500 pounds, I think, maybe 2,000. But the big issue was the time it took because it meant for the whole time that that was happening, the builders had to keep going to Morrison's to the toilet, which of course extended the time it took for the renovation. Even so, four weeks for the full reno, not bad, or was it five, with Christmas in the way? Five weeks, maybe. So going upstairs. So up here, we've got two rooms. We've got this one on the left as you come up. Again, very, very big double, this one. It goes the entire width of the house. And um, I'm just using the normal lens on the, on, the, on the iPhone, so hopefully you get an idea of scale. I know it's not the best. And then in here, a similar size double, absolutely massive. These are 450 each, all day long in Kettering. So we'll get, we'll get good rent on both of those two. I and mean, the beauty with this house is we go up again. And we're onto the third floor. And you can see, now we're up here, that this is another big room. And this will go out for, two, for at least 425 again. So yeah, I mean, we're looking at a really good house here. So now I'm downstairs and got my breath back and it's not so exciting anymore. Let's go through the figures for this property. We've got four, ret letable ro four rentable rooms, rentable rooms. I mean, that's a, a mixture between the two. Four lettable rooms. And those are downstairs, this room, which is probably going to be 425. And upstairs, this room, which is gonna be 450. And it comes with a big cupboard. This room, which is also 450, and is absolutely massive, but also has a beautiful view of wicks. We tend to put things like that on the adverts. Up again, and the top room, which again will be 425, and has an equally stunning view out the window of wicks. 
So I think what I'll do now is I'll lock up here and head back to the studio. I need my whiteboard really so we can go through the figures. But I think what we're going to find is that this property actually is going to come out really well um, because we've uplifted the value, we've forced that appreciation, it was bought at auction with a problem and then we've got really good rental figures. So let's head back to my house, let's go back to the studio and let's do the figures because I want to see what this one comes out like. So I'm back home in the studio and I'm so glad to be back and it's nice and warm. Um, I thought I'd go through the figures. I had a quick chat with my friend to find out exactly what he bought it for, what the fees are, rough reno and all that sort of stuff so I can run through that with you. But the purchase price was 131,000. As I said, I actually found this property on an auction site and I was looking back through the text that we sent and I recommended that he bid it a little bit lower than this and I said that if in my opinion, looking at it, you'd need to get it less than 130,000, that would be the absolute max. So I personally would have probably walked away from this property. Um, and I'll ex at the end of the video, I'll go through one that I've done in the same area, which I bought about the same time, which yields a little bit better. And I negotiated that from an estate agent. So the purchase price was 131. Fees, there was no stamp duty because it was uninhabitable. So there was no bathroom that worked. There was sewage coming up through the floor. It was unmortgageable. The kitchen was broken. Um, so there was no stamp duty, but there was fees because there was auction fees and there was some fees with the bridging loan. So about £5,000 worth of fees. And in terms of the reno, I've just spoken to him and he said at the moment £28,000 has been spent, but that includes the furniture. So we can't really include that when we're looking at how much value we've added. And it's really important when you're doing your calculations, if you're doing a HMO, for example, that you don't include the furniture when you're looking at how the deal worked for the BRRR part of it because the furniture wasn't part of adding value to the house. It may be part of your ROI for the, for the HMO part of it, and you might want to include it in those costs, but it didn't add any value to the house. That said, he hadn't had the invoice for carpets, and there was a few bits of finishing off. So I, I've said to him that I was gonna put it down about 29,000. Now, that could be 27, it could be 30, you know, but I'm going for 29, because as you can see, it gives me a nice round figure, and it's definitely in that ballpark, okay? I'm not sort of saying 29,000, but it's actually 22. It's around about 29,000. Um, so that gives us 165,000 pounds spent for the property. We've got a fairly confident value of 180,000. I think on a bad day, 175. On a good day, 185. I know he's going in for 185, but it's a big three bedroom in Kettering. And the medium sized ones go for around about 170, a large one for 180 to 190, and then I'm in a four bed for about 230, 240. So it's in the right sort of figure range. It just depends on how the value is feeling on that day. And that will give him a profit of about £15,000 on a capital basis. So whilst I don't know the exact figures of what he's put in and what he's spent out, I can tell you that there's about a £15,000 profit. And if I was looking at this just as, okay, roughly how much money is going to be left in the deal, I would say there's going to be about £35,000 left in the property at the end of all of this. So what will that mean? Well, that will mean that roughly his ROI on this will be about 30%. He's going to get about £1,000 a month after all the bills. So he's going to get about £1,000 a month after all the bills. Um, and that will mean that his ROI is going to be somewhere in the region of about 30%. Until I have all the figures, I, I really don't want to surmise it all. I'll just give roughs because I prefer to be exact when I've got the exact figures. But at the moment, if we work on that, it wouldn't be unreasonable to say it's going to be £1,000 a month because we know that the rental on it's pretty good. It's going to be 450 for those two big rooms, 425 for the two small rooms. And that gives us a total of 1750 per month, 750 for bills, management, all that sort of stuff, it's going to leave them about £1,000 a month, which is about 30% ROI, a really good ROI. But this is what I want to loop back a little bit to, uh, to when I said that auction isn't always the best place to purchase a property. Around the same time, we negotiated for another friend for a property in Kettering, and we got it for 126000 It didn't have a sewage issue. It was still uninhabitable, so we were still able to get no stamp duty, but the renovation was only 20,000 pounds. 
And you can see where I'm going with this, can't you? Sometimes auction is not the best. In fact, I've heard of lots of instances where people are putting their house into auction because they believe they'll get more than if they put it in with an estate agent. And this really has been popularised by Homes Under the Hammer and the auctioneer's just putting a nice low guide. I think this property that he purchased had a guide of 90,000. I mean, lots of people are going to be interested at 90,000. But 131? I wasn't really that interested if it was an advertising estate agent for 135 with all those issues, uninhabitable, sewage issues, unmortgageable, and the end value is only 180 and I've got this bracket, I would be saying I need to be getting that for about 120 for me to have my margin. So a word of warning about auction, I'm not saying for one second that this deal is going to work out badly for him, it's not. He's going to make about a £15,000 profit and he'll have done nothing. You know, outsourced all of the work, every, the whole team would have done it for him, it's not a bad deal. But I think he could have done better and I know that he's doing another deal which was bought from an estate agent and I think that deal is going to stack much better. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope it's given you some insight to that property, a bit of these figures and also the perils of auction as well as the rewards. I mean, at the end of the day he has had a reward, it's not the end of the world. Was it the best deal of the century? No. Was it okay? Absolutely. And I'm sure that he'll come out and feel good over the next couple of months once this, once this rent starts hitting his bank account. So have you ever bought at auction? Let me know in the comments, I'd be really interested to hear your stories. And if you've enjoyed this video, please, please, please subscribe and hit that like button because it really does help me out with the algorithm. And don't forget, in the description, there will be a link to a website. If you want to have a one-to-one -one chat with me, you can click that fill out a short form and mean you can have a one-to-one -one consultation. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. My name's Mark Parham and I will see you again next time.